Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to install PCSX2 on Windows, which is a PlayStation 2 emulator, and this is the latest version currently available in 2011. And I'll show you some of the other cool features in the PCSX2 emulator, like being able to go up to 4K and beyond with the games, how to configure the controls, save states, and all of that cool stuff. Okay, so first of all, I want to state that this video is not condoning piracy. I legally own a PS2. I have a game as the game that I'll be trying. I have that game physically. And for legal reasons, it is recommended that you have the game and the console as well because we'll be, you know, emulating. Okay, so first of all, if you just open up a new window, start in PCFX2. I will provide a link to everything that you need, but you can follow along if you want to. Let's go to download Windows. Latest version is 1.6. Just select this one unless you really just want the binary. So select this, because this one you do need Visual C++, the redistributable installed. So this one is just a lot easier. Next, what you want to do is get the PS2 BIOS. So Google that, you know, feel free to just research for that. I use ROMs Mania and I'll just click download and it starts downloading. I'm going to cancel it because I've already got it downloaded. And next, I need to do I think that's it. That's literally everything that we need. So obviously, if you have a game, that's fantastic as well. Uh, do, 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 do that. And now we can actually set this up. So if you just open up this exe, and i want to go to you can do normal installation or portable installation so the normal one will be stored the files will be stored in documents and they'll be stored where you specifically state them to be installed the portable installation is you install directly to the directory you want you can move that folder around and recommend this one unless you're going to be moving it around like if you're only on a usb stick so select this, your UAC will pop up, click yes. And I don't want any desktop shortcuts, but I want to start menu shortcuts. Well, feel free to experiment with that. Not experiment with me, feel free to do which one you want. Click next. And I don't want it there. I want it, again, feel free to put it wherever you want. I want it in the defolder, games, and I want it right there. Click install. Shouldn't take long to install. There we go. So before we do that, click finish, but deselect that. Now, if you extract this BIOS, so you can just do extract all, extract, and in here, copy everything, copy that, go to where you installed PCSX2. So for me, it was D drive, games, PCSX2, and it was here. So what you want to do now is create a folder called BIOS. Actually, before we do that, what we want to do is, because if we go to documents, PCSX2 hasn't been created yet. So let's actually launch PCSX2 up. So we can search for it, PCSX2, it launches up, and this is fine. Click next, and leave all this at default. That shouldn't be an issue. You might slightly vary, but that should be all good. If you have any questions, any problems, feel free to pop me a message. There's a Discord link in the description. And what we're going to do is click Next. And now we need the BIOS. So click Open in Explorer. That's created that folder in Documents. Now you can paste everything that we copied onto here. It's not big. Close that down. Refresh list. And now just select what region you are in. So I'm just going to select version Europe version 2 because that's where I am and click finish and there we go it has now launched okay so there's a bunch of things you can do from here so if we go to config you could go to video core GS settings and there's a few things you can change in here I recommend not messing around with this stuff too much what I recommend is if we go to no, sorry, click the wrong one. If we go to 
plugin set. And this is the one I want. You can change the backend graphics API renderer. OpenGL should be fine, but you can change it to Direct 3D. So DirectX 11, if you want, feel free to experiment. Software, don't really recommend that because that's going to be slow. You want it on hardware. And obviously, the more powerful graphics card you have, the better this will run. Feel free to mess around with the texture filtering as well. The internal resolution, you can up the resolution and go as high as 5K. If, you, if you're going to a high resolution, you're going to need a beastie machine. So let's experiment with what you've got. I'll leave it as it is because I'm recording as well. You'll slow things down a little bit. Feel, you can also modify the anisotropic filtering. So this basically, at obscure angles, the textures in the game can get a bit sort of for the blurry. The anisotropic filtering helps remedy that. So the higher the, that is, the better it looks. In all fairness, anisotropic filtering does not have that much of an impact on your hardware compared to something like anti-aliasing. So I say crank it up to 16 and experiment. If it starts slowing your game down, crank it down to 8, 4, 2 or even off. And I say leave mip mapping alone. That's just the process of having multiple different multiple sizes of textures for different you know distances because obviously if you're close to something the texture needs to look a little higher detail compared to if you're far away for example and again you can check these out feel free to experiment you can go to advanced settings and hacks as well you can check them you can change the shader configuration but we don't really need to do much here so click ok and what you can also do is go to controllers plugin settings and modify pad one and two so you can also connect up an xbox controller ps4 controller ps5 ps3 controller and a bunch of other controllers i've got separate videos covering how to do this i, I use pcsx2 version 1.4 i think at the time for it or maybe it was 1.6 but the process is exactly the same so feel free to check that out so if we go to pad one to modify and see what we're doing to modify it, it's really simple. So if I just, let's say, click that, I enter an input, let's say if I click Y, Y has been mapped to it now. So let's say I do for the, so let's do up, left, right, and down, and for, I'm not gonna map all the controls, I'm gonna map enough that I can basically play what i need to play and face buttons i'll press space for that and we should be all good to go obviously if you've got controllers you can do vibration as well click apply okay now to launch a game you just go to system you can first of all you gotta select the iso so go to iso selector browse and my games or my game is right here and that's selected that hasn't booted it to boot it is go to here you can do, do full boot or fast boot either one is fine so let's if i do full boot it does this intro sequence if you want to see that i've just lowered down the volume um, if i double click it it maximizes it full screen so let's just get into it So it is launching up now. So I can press space, which was X. I don't think I have a button map to skip all of this, yeah. But as you can see, it is working and it is working fantastic. So again, you feel free to up the actual resolution, the internal resolution. That will make things look a lot sharper. So that is something I would highly recommend. Okay, so, and obviously once we get to the menu, and there we go, it is getting into the game now. Yeah, we can create one. Yeah, that's fine. Not a problem. So 
So he handles all the memory card stuff in the background as well, which is fantastic. And save is successful. Okay, so okay, let's go to single player. So it's a quick race, so easy. Let's fly, select Crash Bandicoot. It's launching up the game now. Like I said, you can double click and you'll go full screen. And if you stop moving the mouse, the mouse cursor will disappear. So as you can see, we are in the game now. And it is running very smooth. And like I said, feel free to up the resolution. You see those jagged edges around like Crash Bandicoot's ears, that will help remedy that. So if you up the resolution, it will look that little bit better. Did not map a control to actually activate this thing. So I'm just gonna go off this now. So what you can do is also save and load state. So if I save a state, so if I do slot one, and now as you can see the state saved, if I shut down, the game has been shut down. It is still selected. If I go to, I'll just do a fast boot. waiting for the game to boot now oh there it is okay so we are in the game as you can see but what if we want to get back to where we was we can just do a load state if we go to load state you can do the shortcut f3 or you can do f1 and you can also you know say you know open a particular file as well so you can have more than the 10 slots so if I go to load it's loading me exactly where I was, which is fantastic. So you could save it like mid race in this example, and I'll just press X and let's shut down the game. So that's it. That's all the stuff that you really need to know. There are other features here. You can do multi tap as well. And if you select multi tap, go to controls, plugin settings, and you can also activate multi tap which basically allows you to have multiple controllers beyond the default two. So games like wrestling games and football games, those are the two that I you know, iconically remember. You could have more than two players, so feel free to do that. And the process of mapping it is exactly the same. You can map it onto a keyboard, onto a mouse, onto a controller, whatever you want. So I'm gonna click apply and go okay. And you can also check out the memory cards as well. So you'll show you information about that, where it's located, so you can easily delete and create more memory cards. I guess not much more to that, you can record as well. But that's it, if you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, like I said, there's enable cheats, enable widescreen patches. I prefer not to do widescreen stuff, I, you, you can cause some issues there. But feel free to enable cheats, as usual. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.